Hi, my name is Jess and I am from SciTech and welcome to this Tinker and Create session. In this video, I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process that I followed to create two stop-motion animations so that you can build your own too. If you remember from the Think video, the previous video, the first step in creating your stop-motion animation is drawing your storyboard. So for one of my animations, my storyboard has six pictures and those pictures show what happens from the beginning to the end of my animation. So the other day I was daydreaming at my desk thinking that it would be so amazing if my boring stationary items could be transformed into delicious chocolate snacks. So I put it into a story and right here you can see some of my stationary items going from the side of the frame and up and into my jar so I'm showing movement using this arrow here. Then when they go into the jar they make this cling noise. So I wrote down the sound effect here on that picture here too. Um, then we have a wizard ladybird coming from above and the ladybird is going to land on top of the jar. It's going to spin around and spin around and spin around and transform all of the items inside the jar into chocolate treats. And right here, that's my hand coming to pick one chocolate out of the jar and eat it until the jar is empty. So this is my animation. That's my story. What is yours? So once you have drawn your storyboard, you can move on to casting your characters. So think about what items around the house you could use to create your characters. It could be toys or clay or anything you have laying around, like a jar. Now I wanted to turn my jar into a character and I decided to give it two eyes and two arms. So I had to think about what I could use to make the eyes and I looked around and found some cardboard. So I simply stuck a piece of white paper onto cardboard and then I had to find something to help me draw circles really neatly. So I found something nice and little and round and I drew my two circles. I take my scissors. Now cardboard can be a little bit tricky to cut so make sure you ask an adult to help you. I'm first going to cut this cardboard into a smaller piece of cardboard so I can manipulate it a little bit more easily. So now I've got my two eyes, but I needed to make the pupils. And I thought it was a little bit too tricky to cut out some tiny, tiny circles of cardboard. So instead, I looked around the house for some small, round and dark objects that I could use. And I found those buttons. So then I simply used blue tack to secure the buttons onto my eyes made out of cardboard. So to attach different parts of your characters, you can use blue tack or tape or glue. You can even use split pins if you want to, to make articulated characters like this little robot here. There are many, many fun ways of casting your characters. So think about what you could use. Use your imagination and creativity and your problem solving skills as well to create what you want for your animation. For my animation with my stationary items, I thought it would be normal to film it in my study because that's where I had the idea. But for my flower animation, I decided to give it a gardening theme by adding a spade and some gardening gloves because we are looking at a seed growing into a flower. For your backdrop, you could draw a painter picture or maybe even print a picture from the internet that you like. You could use magazines and cut out photos out of the magazine or use cardboard or colored paper, anything that you like. So once again, you have to think about what you want to do, what materials you want to use and just use a lot of creativity. So now we have our storyboard, our characters are made and our set is done. All we need to do is start shooting our animation. If you remember from the previous video, the Think video, there are two main ways you can shoot your animation. You can either use a straight view angle or you can use overhead shots as well. So you need to decide what would be most appropriate for your 
idea for your animation. So look at your storyboard and have a think about what would work better. One of the most important rules in stop motion is to keep your camera very, very still. Don't take the photos by hand, holding your phone or your tablet. Otherwise, your frames or your pictures are going to be all over the place and your animation is going to be really jumpy. This is me taking the photos by hand and as you can see, it doesn't look that great. So to keep our camera very, very still, we are going to build a stand. Now, of course, you could use a tripod if you have one, but I don't. So I had to use my problem solving skills once again to come up with a solution. Can you think of a way to build a stand for your phone or your tablet so that your pictures are really still? What could we do to build one? I'm going to show you a couple of examples of stands that you can make at home with things you already have, but of course you can build your own and come up with your own idea. Could you make a stand using Lego or books or maybe Play-Doh? If you have a smartphone, what you can do is get two pegs and peg each corner of your phone. And now you have a stand. Now, if your camera is in a corner, make sure that the pegs are on the opposite corners so that your camera is sitting as high as it can. So when I was trying to shoot my video with my jar, I found that my phone was sitting a little bit too low and I couldn't quite see the top of my jar, so that was an issue. What would you do to fix that? How could we solve this problem? One solution that I found is using books. Now, this is looking great. I can see my jar a lot better and there is plenty of space on top of it for my ladybird to come flying and land on it. Now, if you are using a tablet, the peg option isn't really going to work because your tablet is a lot bigger and a lot heavier and it might just tip over. But you can create a stand out of cardboard, for example. Now, every tablet is different, so you might want to try and make your own. I'm drawing a rough hat shape with two little hooks here that will allow our tablet to sit in very nicely. When it gets a little bit too tricky to cut some tight corners in your cardboard, please ask an adult to come and help you. There you go. Now what I need to do is fold my stand in half. So I'm going to use a ruler for this and I'm going to put my ruler in the center and fold my stand. Now we have our stand and it's ready to welcome our tablet. Like so. If you want to use overhead shots, simply tape your smartphone or your tablet to the edge of a table or a desk, making sure that the camera is sticking out over the edge. Now, this technique can be a little bit tricky, so make sure you ask an adult to help you secure your device to your table. If you remember from the Thing video, we are going to use a stop motion app called Stop Motion Studio. So if you haven't downloaded the app yet on your smartphone or tablet, make sure you ask an adult if it's okay, and then go post the video and download the app. In the top right corner, you will see a button that says tap here to add some pictures. Now it might look a little bit different on your device, but let's try to take a picture. Take another one. And another one. Play around with it. See if you can take maybe 10 pictures. Now somewhere, whether it is in the top right corner or down the bottom, the app will tell you how many shots you have taken so far. Now press the play button to play the animation that you have just made using your 10 pictures. The sliding bar on the left hand side is called the onion skin tool. It will show you the last shot that was taken. It's a very useful tool to remember where your objects were the last time you took a picture. 
Practice scrolling forward and backwards, and maybe even deleting photos that you don't want, by clicking on them and pressing delete. To set the exposure and the focus in the app, we need to go into the settings and find that something that looks a little bit like this. You want to read the words auto, AL and the letter P. We want to choose AL. This is going to guarantee best results. Your phone or tablet will naturally want to try and adjust the focus and the amount of light that enters the camera as you take your photos. But this could actually create a flicker effect in your animation, which doesn't look very nice. So to set your exposure and your focus, you want to find those two letters A, L and press that. That way you set your focus, you set your exposure and your camera is not going to adjust. So next we need to adjust our frame rate. A frame rate is the number of pictures in one second of animation. So for example, you are watching this video at 20 frames per second, which means that we needed 25 images to create one second of video. So if we wanted the same result in stop motion, to create a 10 second video, we would need 250 pictures. That's a lot of pictures to take. It will take a really long time. But also what is really cool in stop motion is that jittery effect that you get from having a low frame rate. So we are going to set our frame rate at 10 frames per second. In your app, you want to tap the cogwheel and then the speedometer. And then you can slide the numbers back and forth until the number 10 is in the center. You've now set your frame rate at 10 pictures per second. Now that our camera is set up, we can start shooting our animation. So for best results, you might want to consider the following. Always take a number of shots at the beginning and end of your animation. Make sure you keep your camera really still. Be really gentle when you go and press the record button. Only move your characters a few millimeters at a time. And remember to use your onion skin tool to see where your last shot was taken. I'm now going to show you a few techniques that you might want to try in your own animation. So for example, in my flower animation, I wanted the letters of the title to appear one at a time and then disappear as well. So what I did is I put one letter down and took a photo. Then put another letter down and took another photo. Then the third letter. Then W. Then E and then R. And then for the letters to disappear, I just took them out one at a time and took a photo every time. Could you use this technique in your animation? And think about how you could make the letters appear or disappear maybe a little bit faster or a little bit slower. A challenge I face whilst making my flower animation is that the stem creates a bud which turns into a flower. Now I wanted the flower bud to start small and grow bigger, just like in real life. So how would you do that in stop motion animation? How would you show something growing in size or maybe reducing in size? Well, in this case, I took different pipe cleaners and I rolled them onto themselves to create the buds. But if I take four pipe cleaners of the same size, it's going to create four buds of the same size as well. So what I did instead is I took the pipe cleaners, used one whole one for the bigger bud, and then cut the other ones to different lengths. Once I had different lengths of pipe cleaner, I could roll them up onto themselves to give me four buds of different sizes. So when the frames are played in a sequence, it looks as if the bird is growing. So how could you use this technique in your animation? Could you make something grow bigger or smaller? My last tip for shooting is to make sure that everything of your set that shouldn't be moving doesn't move. So you can use tape or blue tack to fix things together or tape it to the ground. So any elements of your set that should be still don't accidentally move around. Let's take the example of my flower animation. I created a pot and I wanted to pull the stem out of the pot to show the growth of the plant. Now every time that I tried to pull the stem and the leaves out of my pot, my pot was moving around a little bit because 
My papkina is a bit too thick and my pot just wasn't laying flat on the ground. So what would you do to solve this problem? Let's think about it and use our problem solving skills. In this case, this issue is happening because my pot just isn't laying flat. So what I did is I cut two rectangles of uh, cardboard and I'm going to put that cardboard under my pot and tape it in place. So that way I have a gap in the middle of my pot and my pipe cleaners can move freely because they have enough room and aren't rubbing against my pot. Could you make a subject appear from behind another subject using this technique? How could you use that in your animation? Once you have taken all of the pictures for your animation, play your animation back. Make sure you're happy with it. And you might want to consider maybe adding a title at the beginning or some credits at the end. Make sure that we can't see your hand or your arm moving the objects. And remember you can always delete unwanted shots by just clicking delete on the photos you want to remove. Now that you have all of your pictures, we can add sound effects. Audio is super important because you are creating an animation out of silent and still images and you want to turn it into an awesome animation. So for example, if I take this piece of paper and I do this, I can add this sound to my animation like this. How cool is that? In the app, choose where you want to start your sound effect by sliding your pictures back and forth. Once you've found the picture that you want to add the sound effect to, click the microphone icon and then start record. It will give you a few seconds before recording and then you can start recording your sound. Once you're done, press stop and then you can play your sound back. If you're happy with it, leave it, otherwise you can always record another one. Sound can come from lots of very unusual places, so explore around your home and try to discover as many noises and sounds as you can. I just used a tissue box. You can rub two objects together to make a sound. You can use the sound of pouring water or something dropping in water. The sound of scissors cutting. Then you can tap some object to create different sounds as well. And maybe some more original sounds like a little bell. Once you've recorded your sound effects, you can go back into the app and edit your sound by tapping on the image and then clicking audio. There you can trim the sound or delete it if you want to record it again. And that's it. That's how you create a stop motion animation. In the next video, we are going to test our animations and review them to see if there is anything we can improve on or maybe do a little bit differently. Testing and refining is a very important step of the design process. We will also look at some stop motion animations that my friends from SciTech have made using this video as well. We're going to talk about them and see what is great about those videos and what we can learn from it. So thank you for watching this Tinker and Create session and I will see you in the next video.